All right, hello everybody, this is Hybrid, and today on the discussion episode three, uh, Yshe will be joining us later, but for now, I have two guests with us. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, you can go first. Um, okay, I'm David. You might know me from doing CBC reviews on Flash and Green Lantern. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Earth Eagle GT. You might know me from Earth Eagle GT on YouTube and Earth 2 Reviews with Hybrid and Complicast. Alright, so we actually had some technical difficulties. So A, a lot. Um, bear, yeah, a lot of them, so bear with us if anything happens in this recording at all. Cross your fingers, it doesn't. But the topic today is a very popular topic to some degree. A lot of people talk about it all the time. And it's source material like comics or magazines wherever the source material may be and that versus movies so it's really big with the nolan films versus batman and comics it's gotten really big with superman and comics versus man of steel adaption it's been big in the toby mcguire film a uh, raimi series spider-man versus the comic spider-man so it's a pretty big topic pretty broad topic to some degree also and, you know, that's our topic for today. Yeah, it might be one of the most serious topics discussed on the three podcasts so far. So, uh, hopefully we'll yeah, have yeah. it. Yeah, so I guess I'll just start. Um, in my opinion, regarding source material, I think it's a great thing. But I don't think it should be the definitive thing for films. I think we saw good examples of that in the Raimi films because... A big change from the source material was that Spider-Man had organic webbing instead of the web shooters. And it was very mixed. Some people didn't mind it. Like, I didn't really mind it that much. But some people really were bothered by it. And I could understand why, because, you know, it goes against the source material. So there's that. Also, with the Nolan films, the Batman in that one was nothing like the Batman in comics. So true. Uh, The Batman in comics is probably one of the most unrealistic characters in the DC Universe just because of the fact that he can practically do anything. He practically knows everything. And a lot of people are like, well, he's a master of 127 martial arts. That's impossible in a ten year, less than 10-year time span. So um, I don't know if you guys can have I say something? Yeah, go I ahead. I mean, forever, I just finished Forever Evil number two like, while I was waiting for this to start. And, again, Batman is the, like, you can't kill him off, even though Superman and Wonder Woman apparently die, he's still alive. And with the Nolan films, it's just, okay, I'll die from an atomic bomb, I'll get beat up by Bane, um, I won't hurt Joker, I'll make him laugh, that kind of thing. I mean, the Nolan, Batman, I respect as a different interpretation. I mean, with source material, you... You can base it off, but you can't go word from word. I mean, I know he wanted to do a different take on it, and that's what has fanboys raging right now. Yeah, like I, I get that. Uh, personally, I am in the field where I believe it should be between 60 to 70 percent source material based or inspired, and mm-hmm. the rest of it all creativity. So I exactly was same here. Insane. Like, Bane not having Venom, I was totally all for that. I didn't mind it, but what I would have, you know, minded above all else would have been... (laughs) Look at that car. Uh, Oh, yeah, I think that's mine. Wow. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it stopped. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, No, that's fine. Um, I'm not editing this at all, so, you know, it's all all good. But I think... podcast, it's all original. No (laughs) copy. Yeah, but I think... When it comes to Bane and Dark Knight Rises, I couldn't have done without Venom. That's fine, especially because the character had a very major character developing arc where he mm-hmm. decided to get off Venom. Yeah. So I was fine yeah. with that. The only thing I wish they would have kept was his backstory, though. And yeah, they completely. Stuff, and the Lucia Dor yeah. thing. Like, that's such a. Yeah. Here's my thing when you're making an adaption of a character in film, keep the core of the character. Keep the core, like, things of the character. And everything else you could mess with. Like, you can alter the costume a bit. I don't mind that. Except for, like, characters like Spider-Man. They stay traditionally conservative with... Oh, what? CJ's here. Hello? He's alive. 
He's alive. DJ? I've been alive, bro. Oh. Help me carry the pizza in. So, okay, are we are we starting or? Yeah, we're already we in. It, but like five minutes in. I'm happy oh, you shit. have pizza to carry in. I do. I have all, right. all the pizza. Sorry, I was trying to do the same thing that I was doing last time, where I was just driving and talking. But um, well, that the last the last discussion, I was uh, like literally like steering with one hand. I had my eye like my phone up to my face. <laughs> and I was just booking it on the highway back to Richmond. Well, I am not responsible for your death at all. <clears throat> True. Uh, fun I fact, I live in Virginia, too. Just wanted to put you that do? out there. Really? Yes. Oh, snap. Yeah. Fun fact, back. I'm in Pennsylvania. Oh, we're um, all East Coast. Yeah, I know. East Coast for the win. All right. But back yeah, to the topic if, before we lose all the viewers because they think we're not talking about stuff anymore. Yeah, we're not we're not established enough to go off topic yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I say something with yeah, Bane sure. and yeah, with Bane and Dark Knight Rises? My big deal with that is that he you do get that it does yeah. follow the comics within the main like first and second act. He's mm -hmm. in the uh, he's in the pit. Um, I mean, I'm fine with him not being a wrestler. I hate the costume, but I'm fine with it but the thing is is that they make they basically give his origin to talia that's the problem with it essentially just yeah because you give uh, the audience like a feeling oh this is bane he has grown up in um this environment you make him think that he's ross al ghul's son <laughs> which would work in my opinion much better with the plot and then you just give it to talia who if can i say she was i mean it's oh yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Oh yeah, um, like if honestly, they didn't need a female in like Italia in there at all. You could have just had Catwoman. She could have done some stuff. Cause Talia wasn't needed. Like, what did she do? She drive. She uh, drove the truck that had the bomb. Then she died. And she slept with Batman. I think yeah. that's the no. The issue is, I mean, I'll give you two reasons why she was in there, and. This contributed to my dislike for the movie, but um, one is because of Christopher Nolan's ego, true, and yeah. him holding his reputation for having a big twist, true. Mm -hmm. And two, it's it uh, wasn't big because everyone knew it. Yeah, no, I mean everybody kind of knew it, but two, I mean, it's, I think it's honestly just like the, the his ego and for the twist. That's why. But um, yeah. the issue for me is my big thing about Bane is I think. Honestly, out of anybody, like, name me a comic book character outside of maybe Deadpool. Um, I think Bane has had the most disservice done to him. Oh, my gosh, yes. Film. Completely uh, uh, completely agree with that. Let me let me just, let me go ahead and say that I Bane is my favorite Batman villain. Like, in the comics, uh, Bane... Joel's going to yeah. murder you. <laughs> <laughs> he murders me or not. The thing is, Bane is... I mean, next to the Joker for me. I mean, he's up there because Bane is not only a physical challenge for Batman, he's also extremely intelligent. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. never, ever get that in the movies because it's like, oh, he can't be smart and strong. Yeah. And so, like, see, in Batman and Robin, he's basically just literally just... Um, a henchman. I I've ever played, like, the uh, the Black Ops 2 zombie map, zombie map that's about, like, the uh, the pit, and you've got that, that really tall... Uh, oh, what's yeah. It, the, the hillbilly kind of oh. mental... Yeah, uh, I yeah. yeah, he's kind of like that in Batman and Robin. He's uh, he's not. He's just a big dumb guy. And then, in in um, I, I I do like that they did at least have the venom in there, sort of. Yeah. But uh, with with the Dark Knight Rises, you didn't give him the steroids, and basically by the end of the movie, he was an emasculated, basically just a uh, hired thug. He was basically like a club bouncer. That's a. He was just, I that's my problem with Bane, honestly. It was, and they never. I feel like if they. There, despite the other problems with that movie, if they just stuck, and I completely agree with you, I feel like they didn't need Talia in there at all, but it's just no. no like, circuity, and he wanted yeah. uh, basically a tie back in, another sort of way to tie back in mm -hmm. uh, Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begins, but um, I don't know, I just, Bane just, it's he's a complete, uh, he's a wonderful example of movies, movies going away from source material. Yeah, because yeah, all, all the movies make him seem like he's a henchman, which is not what he is in the comics. No. Yeah, and then everyone thinks that he's just some henchman. In reality, he's broken the bat. I mean, he hasn't yep. broken him. For, he's broken him for months, not just a couple hours. 
and then he yeah. gets it healed. Yeah, I love how I love how you brought up the um, the plot twist because another comic book movie, and we can go back to the Nolan thing. I just don't want to stay on it too much because mm-hmm. that was yeah. a complaint we got in the last one was that we were harping on Nolan too much, which I totally get because this is a discussion about all of them, not just the Nolan ones. Yeah. Uh, another plot twist that happened that's been heavily compared to the Nolan one was the Mandarin twist. Yes, yes. And a lot of that I loved is it. because I the, loved Mandarin, it. the Mandarin in the film, in, the, in person, on the surface, does not match with the comic book source material. Hey, can I, which can I, I get understand. it? Yeah, after I finish, CJ. Okay, once you finish, I want to get I want to get my licks in. Me too. I'm, I'm putting my I'm flexing my superiority muscle right now. <laughs> I'm flexing <laughs> my. I don't, I don't have a muscle to flex, but uh. But, uh oh god. Yeah, Josh, anyway, you're really good at flexing. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, so, but no, the Mandarin on the surface. You know, Ben Kingsley. He's not Asian. A lot of people were at first kind of you know confused about that, and then they were like, oh, it's because China. Is helping produce the film, finance the film. So a lot of people were kind of upset about that from the beginning. Very similar to how they're upset about Bane basically wearing a jock strap to a degree <laughs> on his face. <laughs> a thong on but, I mean, uh, uh, on his face. It really, I mean, off. It comes down what? to the core of the characters, though. Uh, when you look at the Mandarin that was presented in Iron Man 3, uh, not Trevor, because <clears throat> Aldrich Killian says he is the real Mandarin. So at that point, after that, I look at him as a Mandarin. And when you look at him, he has all the core qualities of the Mandarin. The Mandarin is heavily manipulative. He is the intelligent equal to Tony Stark, while yeah. also physically being a foe for Iron Man. And when you see, especially the final fight, you can see Aldrich Killian is more than a match for the Iron Man armors. Even He, like, he destroys a bunch of Iron Man armors single-handedly fighting against Tony. And at the same time, you see intellectually, he is on par. He's he's an intellectual, you know, equal to Tony Stark in his own right. I I think that's a I can boldly say that, um, from what we saw in the film, especially if we believe his claim that he was he orchestrated everything from the beginning, the Mandarin, the Ten Rings, like the guy is a is a genius. Yeah. You know the way he played yeah. on everyone's fears. Like honestly, a lot of people criticized. The fact that you know that plot twist, but when you think about it, it's beyond genius. And a lot of people have touched upon this, but I feel like regurgitating various statements into one. When I say, if you were you know a bad guy, right, doing illegal things, the smartest move you could do is find a way to place the blame on someone else or something else. Yep. It's even smarter to look, hey. Here's the organization, here's the group, the country, whatever, I'm working in. What do they fear the most? They fear terrorists. They fear terrorism. Yeah. How can I play on that? Mm -hmm. Because in today's American society, once you put in, you know, terrorism, everybody pretty much goes apeshit, honestly. For lack of a better word, people jump to conclusions all the time. No one really looks back at it, thinks clearly, because they just see terrorists, terrorism. Like, this is a post-9-11 world. Where terrorism is pretty much, you know, the big word for bad guys now. And I yeah. think the way they, you know, wrote that character and the way they had that character, it fits with the core of who the Mandarin is. Like yeah. appearance yeah. wise, no, it does not it, fit appearance wise. He doesn't have the rings. He doesn't he's not Asian. He's not wearing a tuxedo. You know, he's not you know, he's not the stereotypical Asian bad guy anymore. Like he originally was you know, introduced as, but the essence of the character, the insides of him, are the same. All right, Josh. Just uh, can I can I jump in now? Yeah, I, I think I'm done. People are probably like, people are like, man, he really likes that twist. But no, <laughs> for me, to go back to what I was, to go back to what I was saying, I love Iron Man three. Now, I don't think it's the best Iron Man movie, but because I still think that's Iron Man one. My issue is a lot of people are complaining about the twist and how it demasculated the Mandarin. Here's why I give it a pass. Essentially, it's because what we have when you compare the Nolan movie, Dark Knight Rises, to this movie, what you have is a twist for no reason, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, a twist that yeah. doesn't advance the story in any way for no reason. And then you have a twist that does advance the story. And it does serve a purpose in the film. Because Talia, literally, the only purpose that served was basically being a twist, 
and providing a callback to Batman Begins that the movie really didn't need. Um, you could have just said, oh, Bane was trained by the League of Shadows. Boom. Um, you could have left him as, you know, I don't, you could have left him as Ra's al Ghul's son if you really wanted to, because that actually mm-hmm. would be fine. Yeah. That would have been very I mean, interesting. It would have been much better than what we got. S- sticking with Iron Man 3 for a second, I, I was originally kind of, I mean, I loved the movie and I didn't understand a lot of the criticism, but I, um, or I, d- I can understand it, but I didn't agree with it. And I agree with everything Josh says about Killian actually being the Mandarin because he fits all the traits of the modern comic book Mandarin, minus maybe mm-hmm. being Asian in the rings. But um, the one thing I didn't like about Iron Man 3, though, was um, basically Tony having the procedure to remove the arc reactor because essentially those last like 10 to 15 minutes of the film, well, one, pretty much I'm sure they only served a purpose of getting that Chinese guy in the movie, which was part of the deal with China. Um, yeah. and two, uh, I'm pretty sh- I mean, I was basically my issue with it is there's no two. I keep saying one and two and then not doing the two, but, um, uh, basically my issue with it is cause it's, you know, since he's coming back, it was at the time it was a safe bet for them. If RDJ didn't come back, um, they could have just been like, okay, whatever that gives us, that gives them a, a way to sort of move away from the character or recast or something. But since RDJ did come back, it's basically going to definitely be undone within the first 15 minutes of Avengers two, Which, or maybe even before that in an Easter egg scene in one of the other movies. Yeah. Maybe possibly yeah, I definitely see that happening. Yeah, which speculates well, a lot of people think he happening. might die in Avengers two. <laughs> see, I disagree on that, but. Really quickly, before we move on to talk about other, you know, source material, well, actually, were, I think they wanted to say things. something too. But yeah, I know I was about to let them talk. I just wanted to say after they say their piece, we're going to talk more about you know other character adaptions like the Spider-Man films, X-Men films, etc. Also, other DC properties like Watchmen and stuff. How they are from source material, especially like we need. I think we should talk about. You know, costumes, how costumes deviate, how powers and abilities deviate, uh, things like that. Because right now we're kind of like, I think we're... Yeah, we're just... We're, we're, we're talking about good things, but we're talking about things that people have heard so much already. Yeah. 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 That I think people want a more fresher thing to hear. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, yeah, so you guys go ahead with your takes on the whole Iron Man 3 thing. Um, I've been holding this in later. for a good five minutes. I need to say this. Um, okay. In my mind, there are three versions of the Mandarin. There's the original Chinese one. There's the um, suit and tie Chinese guy with the rings. And then there's the ultimate um, machine version. Now, in Iron Man 3, you have all three of those Mandarins, kind of, if you think about it. I mean, if you think, like, the Mandarin in the Ultimates was a virus. And... I guess you can think of Extremis as the virus. And you yeah. have uh, the suit Mandarin as Aldrich Killian, and then you have the original as Ben Kingsley. And they did pull it off smart, because they didn't pull Dark Knight Rises. Everyone thought that um, Ben Kingsley was the actual Mandarin. Um, Aldrich Killian only had one scene in the actual trailers when he just looked up. Um... And it honestly was a brilliant move. I love the movie. Like CJ said, I hated that they took out the arc reactor. Um, it's just, it just like it's just going to be undone. It's I basically know. they're going to be like, oh, and it's going to. I mean, I don't see a way that they can logically explain it. And I've been thinking about it for months. If they pull it well, off if, and they explain it well, you know. Well, whatever. if you think about it, he still is Iron Man because when you go back to Iron Man One with Obadiah, he didn't need an arc reactor implanted in his chest. He didn't need it in his chest, he just needed it in the suit. Yeah, so you can have, because I'm pretty sure all the Iron Man suits have an arc reactor in them, because Tony wasn't piloting them, most of them, in Iron Man 3. and that, I could talk for hours about how I think this leads back into um, Age of Ultron, and, you know, maybe... Oh, yeah, same here. They're going to to have, uh, like, maybe Iron Patriot, they're going to have the military do it over again, and make a Ultron, that's my take on it, and then have Hank Pym working on it, have him introduced, and then have him do Ant-Man in Phase 3. Actually, I'm happy you mentioned that, because we can talk about that too, uh, the fact that Ant-Man slash Hank Pym is not making Ultron in the films. Well, maybe he is, because they are doing a new take on it, 
But, like I said earlier, they could have him work on Ultron. They could have him work for the government. Then he splits off in Avengers 2, and then he becomes Ant-Man. Perhaps. I mean, he might work with the government. He's. I mean, but they did say he wouldn't be involved in any way. Maybe oh. they're just going to jump to Scott Lang and combine the characters. Uh, I want... I, I honestly, like Armin did, Ant-Man should be a legacy character. Yep. Like, you should have Hank Pym, you, then you shouldn't have Hank, uh, Scott Lang. I mean, it's obvious that they're not going to do the Hank Pym beating uh, story. So it was like, just have Hank Pym, have him as the basis, maybe get him killed off, and then have Scott <coughs> Lang take over in the actual movie. Well, it's funny you mention that because the original script that was made like a while, like years ago, now it would be, yeah. actually had that. The basic premise was Scott Lang breaks into Hank Pym's house to take his equipment to rescue his daughter. Because that's and what happened. From there, well. Hank Pym pretty much. It, it's a lot. There's like flashbacks in it where Hank Pym is explaining the suit, the process of how it was made, Pym particles to Scott Lang and things like that. And I guess like three fourths in the film. Or like two thirds, something like that. Scott Lang leaves, and he saves his um, daughter. And when he tries returning the suit back, Hank Pym tells him to keep it. He can, you know, do good with it, like he did saving his daughter, so, something like that. But that's why. Yeah. I mean, there was the announcement. I'm, we're getting a little bit off here, but uh, that's why there was the announcement that you. I will McGregor, edit this out. It's okay. I? That's why. Um, no, they, keep it in. It was rumored that Ewan McGregor was going to be in. Uh, Ant Man, or he was—he was, It was rumored that he was going to be Hank Pym, and it was also rumored that Aaron Eckhart was up for a role. And I was like, that would be great, like a great combo if Aaron Eckhart was Hank Pym or Aaron Eckhart. Too bad, was just up Hank. too bad, it's just a rumor, honestly. I mean, well, actually, no. Um, Aaron Eckhart actually, in an interview, he said that he was approached by Marvel when he was talking to Marvel about something. But um, and so okay. was many other people, but you don't know for now if he got in or not. That's the thing. Well, yeah, no, I feel saying. that. You don't know if he got yeah, in. I, know. I, mean, it's just... I for the gra- I think he has. Well, I think Ewan McGregor has the gravitas to per- pull off someone like, um, like like Hank Pym because Hank Pym is. Mm-hmm. That's why the only yeah. reason is I love Nathan Fillion, but I just I don't I don't see him having just the ability to pull off the uh, emotional just complexity of someone like that. But I'm again could talk for hours and hours and hours about those two actors. So um, moving on back to Iron Man three, um, did was was there another comment to be made yes. by anybody? Or? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I, I feel so bad. I wrote I wrote down notes. Okay. Now okay. <laughs> going all the way back to the Batman thing. I didn't say anything about that. Someone's being prepared. <laughs> okay. So oh, yeah. uh, I forgot about that already. Okay. Now going back to the uh, Ultron thing. I first thought you said Hank Pym was twerking on Ultron, so I was a little concerned no. about that. I was Miley like, Cyrus, do that? and then uh, I actually want to Hank Pym because I want to see what they're gonna do about him hitting his wife. I wanna they're know. not gonna do it. I you know, know that you're yeah. gonna have. They're gonna have to introduce yeah. Janet. I'm pretty sure, but they they're not gonna have the beating. And my, my, you cannot my, have that in a Marvel movie. They can have that only because in the comics, I think it's a big misconception people have. He didn't like beat his wife on a regular like, basis. Once, yeah. It was like once or twice yeah, at yeah, the yeah. most. No, my, he just knows theory, it was once. That's when it was like Black Hornet or Yellow Hornet or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, so when my, he turned uh, the Yellow, yellow jacket. jacket. He yellow never jacket, did yeah. that as Ant-Man. My theory about that is is um, I think he'll be in – he might be in Avengers 2 about – like maybe he's just a scientist, like a S.H.I.E.L.D. scientist. He doesn't have anything to do with yeah. the creation. Yeah, it's the only thing that makes sense. It's, yeah. Maybe he hits her, and then they know he's a wife beater or something like that. And maybe his redemption is he sacrifices himself to kill Ultron or something like that. Yeah, that. I think they want to introduce honestly, him first before they do anything. Honestly, I see them introducing him in Agents of Shield, like just have Hank that, Pym, the um, scientist. Then you uh, have you have to cast a a list actor because you'd have to have him in the Ant Man movie. You'd have to have a major Ultron, like maybe in after credits. But you that'd be, have that'd to be, have him in there. And that, you could, that show. And you could, yeah. so hold up. Real quick, I, I feel really bad. Who am I talking to at this moment? Whoa. David. Yes. David, okay, David. All right, so David and then Eagle Earth. Is is it Earth Eagle? It's whatever you can call it. I keep calling you <laughs> Eagle Earth or something like that. But uh, wait, hold on. What What is it? It's Earth Eagle. Okay, I keep calling you Eagle Earth. Uh, 
<laughs> All right. So yeah, you really continue. Uh, okay. Uh, so what I was saying. Try not to interrupt you anymore. <laughs> um, okay. Going back <laughs> to uh, well, since the whole topic is uh, source material, uh, I guess when uh, I think Josh and then what CJ was talking about, and even David, uh, a, a lot of people were concerned because the whole twist thing in the Mandarin, but a lot of people didn't seem as concerned with the Dark Knight and uh, the Dark Knight Rises because people knew it. Um, I think the oh, reason uh, the reason um, the Mandarin uh, was created was Can because... I just interrupt? I need to say yeah, this. Can I interrupt good. and say this? Yes. I, I wanted to mention this during us discussing Dark Knight Rises, but I might as well say it now. Um, basically, in the comics, like, with a hybrid set that we should talk about, the costumes, if you look at all the Batman uh, source material, his emblem is actually visible. In the movies, you can barely see it. All right, can we, um, can we come back to that when we're talking about costumes? Because mm-hmm. we're going to do that after Iron Man. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. I, I, right. Yeah, I just had to point that out. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. Go ahead. Uh, All right. Okay. Glorious. So with the common... Uh, okay. So the reason the Mandarin was created, because back then, I don't know if he's Japanese or Chinese. That was our common... Chinese. Yeah, that was our common Chinese. enemy. And that's who we hated. And now, like what Josh is pointing out, uh, we hate terrorists. So making him a terrorist makes a lot of sense, because that's who the character is. It doesn't matter that he's Chinese. That's not what matters. It's the point that that's like the common enemy who everyone hated. Mm-hmm. So, Agreed. Bringing out from the source material to movies, it it is changing it, but then again, it makes sense and it stays true to the character. I hear you. Uh, now going on to the costumes, uh, I think I'm going to take your point, David, about Batman. Uh, the reason Batman's bat logo was created was so people would shoot his chest, which was armored instead of going for his head. But in the movie, yeah, they which made was it all out black Dark Knight and stuff, which didn't really make sense because that's not the point of Batman, which I don't really like because it's really going away from the source material. And that's all I have to say. Okay. In Batman yeah, like, Begins, you can at least see the symbol. Yeah. Yeah, like I've always see with Batman, I never really minded the fact that you couldn't see the bat symbol on his chest, just out of the sheer fact that usually the Batman we see is very hardcore on stealth and staying hidden. Yeah. So it makes practical sense. <laughs> like I wasn't minded by it, but especially with the comics, like I know I read, I wrote my. Screenplay. Um, I haven't like made a video on it yet, but I writ I, I wrote a screenplay uh, for a Batman sequel based off of my Batman reboot. And the way I explain it is the symbol is actually like a light source in a way. Like he can project light out of it to for like use to see if he needs to like in very dark environments. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it doesn't that make sense use because it doesn't make sense if you're trying to be stealthy that you have like a yellow symbol. Out, you know, of all colors, yellow. True. So because there's that, but honestly, I think one of the reasons why characters like Batman can get away with changing his suit often is because in comics he changes his suit so much. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. If it's you really crazy. see it, characters like Spider-Man. Spider-Man, I believe, has probably the high, most highly conservative outfit out of all the heroes, just because he practically has never really changed his, you know, main costume. Like, he's had the black suit, he's had the spider armor, but nothing that has, has, you know, nothing that has, you know, really, you know, stayed the test of time. Yeah. So it's being like, Superman, like, he's changed his costume yeah. tons of times. Uh, also, he's changed, he's changed Iron Man movie. has too. Like, yeah, like, they've all, like, all these different heroes have changed their appearances. Well, Iron Man is just classic. It's like a regular suit, so you can change it whenever you want. You don't have to, like, yeah. when it gets outdated, you can just, okay, we need to fix it, new armor. Well, yeah, exactly, and same thing with Batman. He, his costume gets like, ripped, his costume gets destroyed, suit. and he just makes a new one, and he gets a different symbol. Yeah. So I same think, thing with Peter Parker. I mean, if you think about it, big-time suit, negative zone suit, FF suit, uh, well, black well, the spider thing, suit. The thing about those, though, unlike... The Iron Man examples and the Batman examples is that he always goes back to the red and blue. Yes, he did. He only uh, he only yeah. he only uses those other suits for special well, occasions. To speak about well, hasn't he uh, kept well, the Iron Sapphire suit for like years before Civil War ended? Like even mm-hmm. happened? No, he sure. gave it he gave it back after because Tony Stark was uh, using it against him. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I mean, like he's had it years before Civil War started. Yeah, I think and he's Stark had it up till then. That's what I'm trying sense. to say. Yeah, because I Dr. read Palmer Civil War Parker. Marvel Unlimited, and he gives back the suit, but I'm pretty sure that he's had it since, like, 2000 or something. I forgot the year. Let's, um, 
the issue for me, uh, well, I mean, well, Josh, to comment on Josh, I think it's not necessarily, yes, Spider-Man has stuck with typically the same costume, but the point which you said about the colors always stay the same. Technically, Superman's colors typically stay the same. You could argue that the only exception is, uh, you know, any time they show us, you know, the uh, the return or the rebirth suit, where it's black and silver, uh, and any alter- alternate universe examples, Batman changes yeah. his suit a lot, but it's typically, I mean, Batman switches between, you know, the gray, black, and sometimes purple, but I'll get there. Iron Man typically sticks with the same red and gold, although it's variations on both. I mean, typically they stay with the same colors. Superheroes do that, but it's because it's a marketing decision. It's the brand. It's mm-hmm. you. Uh, it's all about brand. It's all about establishing the brand. But yes, to but speak like about, with, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say to speak about um, uh, uh, Batman for a second. I can almost guarantee you the reason they made him gray in the original. Uh, I don't know this for a fact, but I just assume that his um, his you know, the difference. I mean, it's just hard. Like when you're drawing, like back in the day, especially with the digital art that you have now, it's hard to draw so much black on black on black and still. And plus, maintain they wanted to differentiate the, him from Superman because they wanted to make him the complete opposite. Yeah, but I mean, no, no that's why I'm saying that I'm talking about why they went with gray oh, as opposed yeah. to you know black. But um, honestly, I think I don't have a problem with Batman wearing a black suit. But because um, I think it's it's part of the stealth thing, he's at least got to have like a black cape. Yeah, but I think I, it's I, safe I, to say that, that most like, like hardcore them. fans though want the Arkham suit. Absolutely, no, that's what I want for um. That's the one Batman thing I'm really asking for for that, Batman. That's Batman. all I'm asking for. Yeah, okay. okay, no, I mean. Somebody photoshopped like the a mask. Oh on. yeah, I saw that. It that was actually like, kind of cool. Like Mark Batman, and I was like, "Ooh, can't wait!" But uh, I saw that. It was amazing. Well, versus yep. the source material, though, versus you know the movies, and I guess you know versus the Arkham games. I, well, which one do you think is best? Arkham. Arkham. Oh, they've confirmed. No, Hold on. They, yeah, but they've the movies, confirmed. Or? They confirmed that the Arkham games aren't going to be adapted into movies. They're not going to even have the suit there. It's been. Well, I never, I never thought they'd be in movies. Yeah, no, sadly, no, it's not expect- happening. It's their own thing. They've confirmed it. It's only video games. No, no, no. That's I mean, the I, only I, story I, they're telling. I never really thought that they'd be movies, though. That's one of those things. Is I mean, I don't think they'd be able to successfully parlay that into a movie. My big deal is um, the suit, though. You could take cues from the suit because it. I mean. I don't think it would be. I don't think yeah. they'd be a little too offended by you, you know, mm-hmm. update the suit a little bit. But uh, I mean, if they change the emblem, I and to keep the rest of the Arkham suit, I'd love it because honestly, the emblem for Arkham suit is just mad to me. Yep, I feel that. But um, yeah. I I don't know. I the one thing, and I'm gonna bring this up real quick. Amazing Spider-Man Two. I I oh in god. Love. The suit. I, See, you guys, you guys can talk about hating that movie all I want. It might just be no, a giant. No, don't, show. dude. Don't get me wrong. I love the first movie. I hate that they changed the suit. Because no, I love, the, going Sam you know I love the suit. You know why I love the suit? Because not that, it, it doesn't actually it look back like to the comics. It looks like, what it looks like is the original amazing. Uh, it looks like the Amazing Spider-Man suit. It looks like the remitted. Uh, I agree suit. with that. Yeah, that's but why I, I like it. I agree with that, but I hate that they're going back because. Amazing Spider-Man 1 had a different suit. It had a different take. I mean, it's not the untold I, story that we were promised, but it was a different suit. In that but I've got to admit, that. the Amazing Spider-Man suit is my favorite... Uh, it's my favorite Spider-Man suit of all time, really. It's because I love... I love. I just love the art for Amazing Spider-Man. It's, it's one a new interpret... It's a new interpretation, and that's why it's basically my favorite, too. I mean... No, not, not, not well, honest. Going. The comics, like Amazing Spider-Man comics, is one of my favorite. That's my favorite interpretation of the suit. It's red, blue. The eyes change in size, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, um, I mean, I've I, read the classic like stuff on Marvel Unlimited, and I love the suit too. But yeah. I hate that they're just changing the theme of the suit just to please all the Rami fans, and I hate that for it. I don't well, see. I feel. Different. I feel like it. The Where suit changing in the film. It kind of represents, you know, a different, you know, take on it, it. a more advanced Peter Parker in a way he's where, changed. you know, the Tobey Maguire Peter Parker 
from the get go, he was really advanced in the way you know he made a suit. Like obviously, yeah. when he drew that suit in that scene in the first Spider Man film, from when he actually put it on, there was you know time obviously elapsed, which you know mm-hmm. that time could have been him using his wrestling suit still until he had the materials <coughs> to actually make a professional looking suit. Or for all we know, he ordered a professional person you know that could make costumes, make cosplay suits for whatever to make that suit. Now we saw in the Amazing Spider-Man film with not he made it custom. Yeah, he, he made it himself. On thing. Like he made it himself. He didn't really, you know, you know, per, like wait that long to make it. He kind of made it quite quickly. Like I'd say he probably made it in a week, two weeks time versus what Tobey Maguire's suit, you know, for it all we forever. know, it, to- it could have taken a year. It could yeah. well obviously not a year cuz it was during the school year time span. But actually yeah, it could have taken Probably like a good six months, like a few months, considering how we started off seemingly in the fall, you know, beginning semester kind of time. And then by the time he started being actually Spider Man, Spider Man, it was like he's practically graduated. So honestly, I think think in Amazing um, Spider Man 2, the change in the suit, it really shows him taking being Spider Man more seriously, honestly, in my opinion. But regarding movie versus source material, I, I still think the costume suit is better just because I've always been a big fan of the webs underneath the armpits, the mm-hmm. underarm yeah. webbing. I've always been a big fan I, of that. That's why I love uh, Spectacular. Yeah, I think it, it really sh- shows a lot of personality with the suit. It's not yeah. ory. It's not just you know something you put on. It has that extra thing to it that really personalizes you know, the well, suit. Well, in the first well, in the first comics, the Stan Lee run, which I've read on Marvel Limited, uh, it was because um, it wasn't to wrestle. It was to put on a, I'm pretty sure it was just a, a circus act, and he wanted to make it colorful. It was explained there. He wanted to make it colorful, wanted to make it stand out, so he'd become famous. And then he's obviously turned, like, villain by J. J. with Jameson, but that's not the main point here. He makes it to stand out, and... They're like they go away from that a little bit, honestly. I feel in the movies. Does anyone else have anything to say about the Spider-Man suit for film versus comic before we talk about another? Uh, yeah, uh, like, I do. Hero slash villain suit. All right, go ahead. Um, I just gotta say it's not really about versus each other. I'm just saying if that they don't transition the original Amazing Spider-Man suit into and then go with the new one in Amazing Spider-Man Two, I'm just gonna walk out of the theater. Because I want them to pull a Dark Knight on us and have the original suit and then have the new suit. They are doing that. It was confirmed by the stunt double for Andrew Garfield. No, but that was... A, I thought it was a picture from the original. That's what it was stated nope. as. Oh, no. really? It was okay, from I'm the, not walking out of the theater then. <laughs> it was from while filming Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, they got a picture they of said, him. It was, it was early on filming when they were still filming, doing the principal f- photography and, <coughs> oh, okay. and everything before they start entering post-production. So yeah, oh, okay. he does... What it seems like is going to happen is his suit is going to get you know messed up, destroyed, and from there... And it's probably going to be early on in the movie uh, from what it seems like. And then from there, he gets a new suit. Mm-hmm. I hate the rhino in that... I just, so far, I hate it. Well, he's going to be in Amazing Spider-Man 3. We'll right see. Now? I mean, because I think they're definitely setting up for a Sinister Six thing. Yeah, like, yeah Paul Giamatti well, they, said it. They've confirmed up to, like, five movies so far, I think. I'm not sure. I think they went ahead and confirmed six. Oh, well, well then Sinister Six, obviously. Six yeah. movies. Yep. But uh, we'll see. I mean, the Rhino, Giamatti said he doesn't really play a huge role in this one. But um, I mean, we'll see. And that's, he, another, that's another thing we could say. Honestly, I think... Honestly, for now, I think he's been Nolanized. I think it's safe to say that I believe he's been Nolanized. A little bit. I mean, I don't yeah. know. It's, I mean, it he's like that. Like they're trying to go a more realistic route with him. What's yeah, interesting? and that's what I hate, honestly. Okay, so I think we've talked about, you know, heroes. Like, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies... I think it's. I think it's essentially unanimous. Everybody likes the Captain America First Avenger costume more than the traditional costume, exactly. especially the one in Avengers. A lot of people hate the one in Avengers. Um, 
But I think, you know, like the Thor suit, I think that's pretty faithful, yet pretty good with the comics. But I think we should talk about the villain suits. Like, a lot of people despise the Green Joker. Goblin suit. Uh, the Joker. Joker outfit he wore. Like, you know, which ones, you want to talk about, like, which ones for you either revolutionized the character or, you know, did nothing for the character compared to the comic I wanna, book version? I want to say this right now. I hate Joker and Dark Knight. I hate him. What? Yeah, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved what Heath Ledger has done. He's done amazing with what he got, but he's not Joker. That is what? a mobster wearing face paint. He's not a mobster, though. Did you yeah. watch the movie? <laughs> I have he's, it on my iPod. I think he more represents Joker than, honestly, I think he represents more of the Joker than Jack Nicholson did. That, honestly... That, that's an equally as polarizing statement, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jack Nicholson was Joker before he fell in. I mean, he was the funny killing guy before he fell into the pod. That's why they messed yeah. up. That I feel in the original, he's but more mobster to me. But I would but, still pick uh, Jack Nicholson yeah. over Heath Ledger as Joker. I, I mean, Heath, I loved Heath I loved the movie. Heath Ledger oh. represented more of a. He represented the more like the psychological aspect of the Joker that makes him so, uh, attractive. Helen, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things where I didn't get crazy from Jack Nicholson's Joker. I got, yeah, he's a criminal. From Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger's I, Joker is like the only one that I feel represents just the psychologically just insane nature of the Joker that we love. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you, you, you think of the Joker, you think of probably the, fucking crazy guy from Dark Knight Returns. You don't think of, you know, just a dude in a suit who's, you know, being yeah, Jack. But just, no offense, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this. The thing that the Dark Knight, I think the original Batman film and the Dark Knight <coughs> Batman film, Jokers were two different Jokers. Well, obviously they're two different Jokers. But yeah. I think they represented two different, you know, eras of Jokers. Like, on the one hand, we have the Joker that is just having fun with what he's doing. Like, this guy, he has the Joker gas. Like, when's the last time the Joker really used Joker gas in comics recently? It, like, he barely he even used uses it. Used it in the month? Like, he I barely... Wasn't, he, yeah, but I mean, like, now, like, month? the modern Joker that we see. I know, but he did it in Villains Month, I'm pretty sure. He did, but that was in the past. Oh, well. But I'm saying that the Joker now, like the, the Joker that would be considered the current Joker, he doesn't do that more. He doesn't, doesn't do the have a, messed he doesn't up have gags. Face. Like, he doesn't have the distorted sense of humor he used to have. Instead, we have a much more psychological Joker because Batman has become a much more serious opponent. So the Joker has gone from someone that's just having, you know, really fun with what he's doing and has a twisted sense of humor to someone that's really the anti Batman. Because that's really I what mean, they've made all the all the villains now. All the villains I mean, made, I, like, I the like arch to enemies point out with have been the opposite. The killing joke. The killing joke. I'm pretty sure it was in Killing Joke. Um, a guy's like, okay, I'm not going to go near you. You're the Joker. You're going to kill me. And Joker says, I'm not going to kill you because it wouldn't be funny. I only kill people if it's funny. That's the Joker to me. That not, is not the um, Joker. The Joker is crazy. He kills little kids for no reason. Basically. No, that's, that's the Joker. See, the modern Joker we have now is just the psychological anti-Batman. Yeah. Physically, he's not comparable to Batman. Obviously, he isn't trained day and night. But psychologically, he is. Batman is heavily structured. He thinks things through a lot. He, well, he really opinion, takes I mean, his time. But the Joker you know, we have now is totally different. He's chaotic. He's all over the place mentally. He doesn't well, think anything see, through. He just does. Here's the thing, and he I'm gonna argue a, that I'm gonna I'm gonna argue that Heath Ledger's Joker actually does both of the things that you're saying, because it's clear that while Heath while Heath Ledger, I mean, I, I'm not gonna bring up that stupid oh he had his finger on the hammer of the gun when Dent was pointing it at him. No, that wasn't true. That's, that no, was that wasn't true. Was, it was just a moment. I know. Yeah, moment. he was handing but no, it in. I'm not gonna bring yeah. that up. What I'm gonna say is Heath Ledger's Joker says, "Do I really look like a guy with a plan?" That's an ironic statement because you know he wasn't doing that off the cuff. He had the entire the entirety of that was planned out. The entirety yeah, of that he was movie, manipulating everybody. Joker's insane, but he's manipulative. 
it's one of those things where he's actually incredibly intelligent and incredibly he, he plans it all out. Like a crazy but girlfriend. This whole thing is you, you were saying tell essentially that yes. Joker was going to be a main part in Dark Knight Rise. But, but the thing is, is a, yeah, death. definitely, I agree with. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Armin because they didn't kill him off. Podcast. They they fooled the audience with the whole when he drops down and then he saves him like as a reference but to the original. But then the thing is, he, yeah. I mean, the thing is, to me, Heath Ledger's Joker represents, I mean, because, I mean, your whole point about, you know, I only kill people when it's funny, it's it's one of those things, well, what is funny to the Joker is probably not funny to the rest of us because he's insane. It's it's one of those things where, and he didn't kill, like, everyone he came across in that movie. He killed a lot of people, but he didn't kill, like, everyone. He didn't it's, kill Harvey Dent, and he didn't kill Batman. I'm pretty sure I that's the only people he didn't kill. What's interpretive? No, he didn't kill. He could have killed a lot of people in that hospital. He could have killed like everyone on that bus just right away. The thing is, he kills people not when it's funny, but when there's a plan. Yeah, when it's, it's part of the plan because that's what's funny to him. The ultimate plan fulfilling that is what would have been funny, and I think that's what he meant in that statement when I would have killed you if it was funny. He didn't kill him because it really didn't matter. It's, and I think that's, I think that's what the Joker's about. So yeah. I mean. Honestly, I I do like Dark Knight Rises. Don't go hate it on the comments, but I'm just saying. No, I'm not hating on the comments. I'm no, I mean I'm telling I, I'm telling everyone who's going to watch this. And, oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, because I know I'm going to get a lot of hate because all no one nights. But um, I just don't see. I mean, I it's an interpret yeah, it's an interpretation of the Joker. It's just yep. not the um interpretation that I'm the most fan of. That's all I'm saying. I agree. And with, uh, I know this is slightly off topic, but it all, it all relates back to does film relate to like uh, the comics and stuff. But I, I think what film has been doing recently with the Joker is, and yeah, in the comics, it's mostly like we don't get enough backstory of Joker. It's just been a giant like, oh, he's only there to be the opposite of Batman. There's no like really story behind him, which is... I, I Someone guess. dancing on a rubber duck or something? I, I don't. What? Oh yeah, sorry, that was me. I I just got off my bed because my computer just keeps turning on randomly. Okay. But um. Uh, okay. And uh, the, with, I forget what I was gonna say. And um, hello. I I forgot now. <laughs> it will come oh, back well. to me. Yeah, if it comes back to you, just let us know. But um, I guess the because I might have to go here in a second. Um, okay. I think my computer's dying as well, and I don't have the charger. But um, phone, my phone gosh. died. That's why it disappeared. But uh, the, the thing is, um, for me, the thing that uh, David said about interpretation rings it rings very true to me because it's basically when we're talking about how movies represent comics and how you know our movies, you know, good representations of comics. Basically, what he says about interpretations is exactly what we need to remember. And this is my, my parting thoughts. Basically, literally, anytime one of these guys shows up in a movie, it's just an interpretation. Anytime a comic is adapted, it's interpreted for the screen. And that's, it's Amen. probably not going to be exactly the same because there's, you know, it could be. Some comics, I feel like, could be just taken literally. You could just make the images on the paper, just turn them into... You know, the screen, but we don't see that, and that's for various reasons that we'll never know. We see it in Watchmen. Stupid, we, do, we do see it in Watchmen. Whether it's just a stupid, well, well, Preach. well, you in could, a way, in a way. I mean, you could you could argue some scenes, but not always. The thing I is, know, but, but um, I mean, what I'm saying is, the source <clears throat> yeah, what you could say is the um, I mean, I guess my point is, it's what we need to remember is. It's just interpretation. It's exactly. it's everything interpretation. There are a thousand there are a thousand different little parts that go into making a film and you know whether it doesn't happen the exact same way is because of just a studio executive or a cost constraint or you know the difficulty of the shot or just the fact that it's completely impossible. Um it I'm sure there's a reason and I actually, you know, for some reason still have faith like in these studios to you know, do their own thing and make a good interpretation, just like in my opinion, Heath Ledger made a good interpretation of the Joker. As some people feel, Jack Nicholson did a good interpretation. I feel like I you got to have faith in the studios. Uh, exactly. And that's why I I get why I kind of see why they're hating on Singer, but 
I I honestly I have faith in the guy, so we'll see if I'm just proved wrong. But uh, anyways, I uh, I'm gonna have to bounce. So signing off. Okay. I am. Armin's probably going to kill you. Armin's probably going to kill you for saying that. Armin can hope. kill me, but I have hope. I mean, seriously, think about Singer. What has Singer done to make you guys so angry? It's like okay, all he I'll, did I'll, wait, I'll, I'll answer your question right here. So Singer. No, wait. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Okay. All he did was create X Men Two, yeah. arguably next to First Class, the best X Men movie. Yeah. No, uh, but I'll, I'll answer a question. Why he makes us so mad? Please. It's because he made so he let's let's be honest. He brought back comic book movies with X Men, X Men One. Yep. Yes, yes. But what makes me so angry is that he left. He just left the game to go to go do Sucker Punch and Jack and the Beanstalk or whatever. No, he didn't leave the game. He did not leave the game. He gave us the Amazing Superman Returns. Oh yeah, and, love, and he gave us. Superman I love Returns. Superman Returns. Yeah, I like that movie. Sorry, Superman After Returns Jack. is. Better than Man of Steel, but, in my opinion. But yes, not only uh, not Air High Five, he, I totally agree. Because it's it's a Donner it has film. A much it's a Richard method. Donner film. Yes, yes. It's a no, different it's tone and message. Same. It's it's, it's basically tone. the third Donner film. Yeah, that's but, yes, that's why I love it. But, well, that was but, honestly yeah. three and four. Yeah, it was it was like no, literally, because I think in an interview, Singer said, you know, okay, what I intended was you forget Superman three, Superman four, Superman. I guess was there a five? No, no, there wasn't. Was. It ended okay, at so the world peace thing. Just forget <laughs> Superman news. three and four. This is a sequel to Superman two, and I think that's that's why I love it. It's they even anyways, went back and threw in the <coughs> fake wigs. Yeah, from from the originals. But with, I, my, no, but with my Earth point. Eagle, if I remember, and I got your name right the yeah. first time that time, yes. it's because I'm looking at it. Yeah. But um, the uh, the thing for me is he left to go do Superman. If I remember correctly, yeah. that was why he yes, left. He did. Yes. But they um, came out. I'm pretty sure that like the same year yeah. or no. And I love Superman Returns, but and honestly, then I mean, it was one of those things where he had a choice to make, and he decided to go make Superman. And I get the angry that he left, but it's like I'm going to use a sports metaphor here. A lot of people, uh, some of you might not get. Josh might not get because he doesn't really watch basketball. But it's like LeBron left. Stop crying, Cleveland. You let get over it. It's. <laughs> Hey, I follow right. sports. I'm an athlete. Yeah, two two <laughs> things. I don't know why you and Hybrid have an obsession of using sports metaphors. Because we're both athletic. I know, but like every time, like, I'll I'm be in like a podcast with like a Hybrid, and he's like, "Well, uh, I don't know if you play sports, but here's a metaphor," and he'll always say that to me. But, this is why me and Josh are friends. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I think what's making me so mad about Singer is that so he left to do Superman. Yes, he left to do Sucker Punch and. Jack and the Beanstalk, but then he just came back and he pushed out the director who made First Class. He pushed him out of his slot, and then which uh-huh. ultimately pushed him out of Kickass too. Yeah, first class no, he's done back. more. No, he's done more than to make people mad because he's also uh, just completely destroyed the timeline. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Since he left, he messed up X3, and then he that's he the said, only uh, gripe with it. Yeah, then he no, said X3 wasn't in gripe. continuity, but that doesn't make Rat sense. Nerd. So. Ratner fucked up X three guys. Let's let's be real. Uh, I, no, I'm not complaining about X three. Honestly, amazing. I, I don't. I care hate X three, but uh, I hate it too. But I'm not complaining. But my thing is, um, here's here's my deal. Um, if I remember correctly, no, Matt Vaughn. It's not that Singer pushed Matt Vaughn out. It's that Matt Vaughn had other filming things. He was doing Kick Ass yeah, two did. around the time that we're going to be he filming. Was doing- First Class 2 or Days of Future Past. So it's not Singer's fault. It's Singer was option B. They didn't want to push back this movie, so they went with Singer. No, I mean, no, he, no he left Kick-Ass 2 to do uh, X-Men, Days of Future Past 2, but then Singer came back, and he couldn't do that, and then he couldn't go back to Kick-Ass 2, so then he kind of got stuck. Give me a sec. I'm Googling Look it up. right now. Look it up. I-, I promise you. Okay. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the topic. All right, going back so to the topic, no. though. Um... No, hold on. No, it says right here on Screen Rant: Matthew Vaughn leaves X Men: Days of Future Past. Um, however, Kickass Two, he has spoken up. Seemingly, basically, the issue was not between Fox and Vaughn, but rather another film project that conflicted with Vaughn's job. And this is from Mark Miller, who was basically working with him on Kickass Two. He said, "We thought Matt was going to do X Men first, but there were actually a few imitators of Secret Service in the works. People think you're lying. Blah 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 blah." So. Matthew said, fuck this, I'm not letting anyone steal our ideas. So basically, it's just because he went to go create the comic book version of, or the movie version of the comic, The Secret Service. So, that's why y'all can stop hating. (laughs) Mic drop, I'm out. (laughs) No, it's... 
All right. Okay. So, bye, guys. Uh, I really got to bounce. There's, like, cold pizza now waiting for me. Uh, <laughs> later. Later. All right, see Go you eat that pizza. Go eat that pizza. I gotta, I gotta, I'll eat that pizza for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. See ya. But going, going back okay. to the topic, uh, like what White Sheep said, everything is like uh, I don't. I'll make like an artsy metaphor since I'll do it too. Art is all around us, and interpretations all around us. So, if if I say a shoe's a shoe, someone could be like, no, it's like a car or something. That's someone's interpretation, and yeah, I'm okay. It's with interpretation. That. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's what I um, have to say about. I it. just want to point one thing out. I love Green Lantern. It's like I actually believe it's. Like close to source source material now. Whoever is watching this, what? I now give what? you permission. Get out of here! On me. No, get out of here! Wait, hold, hold, hold. I, I'm, I'm kidding! I'm to... kidding! I'm kidding! I'm kidding! Okay, I must say I want you to explain this. <laughs> but, okay. No, actually, I'm fine with Green Lantern. I mean, explain. I don't hate it. Explain. I mean, I actually enjoyed it. Which okay, well, I, I won't wrong? go into it because that will extend this by another like thirty minutes. What? But I think our closing subtopic. Because this video is getting long, and the longer video is, yeah, the hour. less the retention rate is. I think our closing thing is something that has been very, very popular among comic book fans, and the fans of the films alike. Do you think the movies influence the source material, or the source yes. material truly influences the movies? Hmm. Like, no. I personally believe it goes both ways. Hmm. I believe the source material inspires and maybe, yeah, well, I think, yeah, it inspires the films. And then the films take their own creative spin with it, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. Or they have their own, like, new things they add to it. And then that does well. They want, because a lot of people don't understand. The main thing with the films, the TV shows, etc., a big goal they have is, I don't know if you heard that, my cat just sneezed. Um, the main goal of those, though, are basically to bring new audiences to that product. It's basically very expensive, time-consuming, you know, commercials, merchandising, in a way. So that's why a lot of people are kind of upset right now. Diggle is now in the Green Arrow comic. Don't um, remind me. Don't remind me of that. Tommy Merlin is in there too. He's a good character. Like, sorry. Like a lot of things from the you know the movies, especially like I'm pretty sure whatever like in the Nolan films, for example, Lucius Fox has been much more highly, like, not highly, he's been integrated more in the Batman comics since exactly. the Batman, the Nolan films. Uh, same Especially thing with Iron Man. Especially the two Clayface. Um, yeah, like, like Iron Man, the, I, like, honestly, I don't know if any of you have been reading Iron Man comics. I do. That is probably, especially in the Ultimates universe, probably the biggest example of movies influencing source material is exactly. the fact that his armors, or his armor that he predominantly started wearing and still wears, even though it's gold and black now, it has the same aesthetic look to it as the film armor. Yes, it's so, just a different color, and they try to bounce it off as a new one, but they're just trying to get, like, oh, this is Iron Man, so I'll go pick up this comic kind of thing. Yeah, so I think it give and takes, honestly. Uh, I think... You know, to some degree, source material is, in, like, it is changed around to reflect the films. And I think in the same way, the films are obviously, they have to be obviously inspired in some way from the source material, or else, you know, I don't know how they make a movie on these characters. But I want to get your guys' opinion. So, you know, obviously the viewers, I want them to comment below, but you guys, since you're here, what do you think? We are here. Um, well, uh, I'd let... Earth Eagle go on and say anything about it more. No, you can go first. It's fine. Well, thanks. I need to think about it. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, um, I'm just trying to think of a good example. Um, Alright, so I'll just go with Green Lantern. I mean, um, it is true to comics in my opinion. Um, I forget where, where you were talking about before. I just had a brain fart. Um, yeah. I th was that was that your definition? Was that what you were saying? I don't know. I I just completely forgot what we just talked about. Oh, well, okay. Well, then I'll talk then. <laughs> Thank you. Um. <laughs> so. Yeah, I do think they coincide. So comic books do affect the movies, and movies do affect the comics, and that is not a bad thing. Some people think that the comics and movies should be two separate entities, but 
they both they have, should be somewhat same. Yeah, but they both have great things and they both don't have great things, which is okay because no one's perfect and the characters aren't perfect and the writers aren't perfect. Which is, unless you're Superman, you must be perfect. Uh, if Superman was perfect, then that oh, kryptonite thing wouldn't exist. Let's just put that. Superman's out. not perfect because he died in Forever Evil, but now he's going to come back in like five issues. We all know he didn't die. They just got sent to Earth three. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's stupid. Uh, we can I mean, we can talk about that uh, totally another time. But I didn't mean to interrupt I mean, you guys. I, uh, continue. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's everything's fine. Like I it I don't have a problem with uh, one pulling off of the other as long as I get great content. I, if I get if I get a character that's good and a plot that's good from the comics or the movies, I am perfectly fine. I don't care if they make Batman a transvestite woman. If if the, if the plot is good and the story and the character is good, I'll be totally fine with that. So okay, well, obviously um, DC wouldn't allow that because you know they don't like any change. They don't even allow Batwoman to get married. True. True. Yeah. Okay. So do you have? Do you remember though? What you okay, were I remember. Say? Yeah. Thanks for remembering, uh, making me remember Earth Eagle. Um, yeah, Joker, the Dark Knight Rise, I mean, Dark Knight Joker, I think it's safe to say influenced Death in the Family. I mean, that is a psychotic Joker. He's, like, not here for shits and giggles. He's here to mess shit up. He's here to mess with people's minds, and it really does go both ways, like, um, everyone else said. Um, the comics do influence the movies, Movies influence comics. It's pretty much safe to say that. Well, um, yeah, thanks for you guys' inputs. Uh, that okay. basically concludes this episode. Uh, trying the best as possible to get it not too much past an hour. So for hour the viewers still viewing this, uh, well, first off, thanks for actually like you know giving an hour of your life to view this. I will this. give you a cookie but, <laughs> if you make it to this point i will send you a chocolate chip cookie but um this is uploading obviously earlier than saturday because i will be very busy all day saturday so the next one will be saturday as normal thanks for viewing this comment below your thoughts uh source material versus the movies it could be any of the subtopics that we discussed it could be more um i know we didn't discuss really you know changes in abilities powers Perfect example, Raimi Spider-Man versus comic Spider-Man. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> minus the other story arc. Except for the other story arc is a perfect example of films influencing comics or source material also because of that. But anyways, you know, comment below if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Uh, please subscribe. Subscribe to their channels. I'll put the links in the description if they have a YouTube channel. I don't channel. think I even said my channel. So, I don't think I even said it. Uh, it's Movie News 101. Okay, so those will be in the description below. Check those out. Um, obviously, they're here for a reason. So without further ado, this is Hybrid, and I'll see you guys later.